I'm going to be doing uh, several little videos uh, discussing wheelchair etiquette, some things you need to know to gain knowledge. So knowledge is power. And the more knowledge we have and understanding of something, the more um, comfortable we are to engage with, with people with disabilities. So I try to do a lot of educational stuff on, on my YouTube channel and to try to help people just to understand. So the next few series, little series of videos I wanna do are gonna, are gonna be involving wheelchair specific, etiquette, safety, assumptions, things like that. So I hope you'll follow along in, in several of them that will be connected. Um, but in this first video, I wanna specifically set a little bit of housekeeping on some, um, just some basic knowledge. It's not really specific to any unique person with a disability. For example, um, assumptions. Many times when we see someone that uses a wheelchair, we assume that they cannot walk at all. While that may be true, for example, it's true for me, it, it's not true for everybody. Um, some, I specifically have a spinal cord injury. Other people have certain diseases, things they were disabilities they were born with, that um, some of them can stand, some of them can walk short distances, some of them, it may be a heart issue that has nothing to do with um, a physical limb or something like that, but they, they can't stand up without passing out, or there's so many different um, scenarios out there, I can't even begin to name all of them. But I don't want you to have the assumption that someone, just because they use a wheelchair, means they cannot, like, like they are paralyzed or have a spinal cord injury or cannot stand or walk at all. That's not true. Even somebody with a spinal cord injury can still walk. There are people that are able to walk or are able to ambulate some or able to even stand up but not be able to take steps. It's very weird how the nervous system is wired and what nerves make what move and all these different things. So don't make the assumption just because you see somebody in a wheelchair that they that that's it. They're supposed to stay there. So if you see someone in a store that's in a wheelchair and maybe they are able to stand and reach something on a on a higher shelf and then sit back down, don't think they've been miraculously healed or that they're faking it. That's not true. So you want to make sure that you don't Pretend that you are a neurologist or a specialist in all these different um, health situations because you're not and neither am I. So just do yourself a favor and save yourself from a lot of embarrassment not to make that assumption. The next assumption I want you to not make is I don't want you to assume that someone just has one piece of mobility equipment that may help them get around. For example, I have a manual wheelchair. I also have a power wheelchair. Some people may also have a walker that they would use. So, or any other type of, um, maybe they have braces braces or something like that. So there may be a variety of mobility equipment that we need to utilize, just like you would use a variety of, of shoes. I'm sure you ladies don't play tennis in high heels and you men don't go, um, you know, hiking or vice versa. <laughs> not even gender specific here, but I just to make a point, you use different shoes for your different needs. We use different mobility equipment for our different needs. So don't make the assumption everybody only has one thing and that's what they better use and why are you using that? I can't believe that. Hey, I like my manual chair for some things. It's lightweight, it gets in tighter spaces, it's easier to transport. I like my power chair for a lot of other things. It helps preserve, preserve my energy, uh, fight fatigue, a lot of pain if I'm gonna be outside doing a lot of work or long distances all day. So. That's my business, it's not yours, so don't make that assumption. And then the third assumption I don't want you to make is uh, there are differences in cognitive disabilities, mental disabilities, or um, physical only disabilities. There are people that have both cognitive and physical disabilities. There are some people that have physical disabilities and don't have cognitive disabilities. So um, you don't want to approach or treat someone like everyone has the same disability or same function in life. You need to get to know that person, figure it out, they will communicate with you, you will communicate back, and you will learn each other. But don't make the assumption that everybody's in the same classification. So you don't need to talk to me like I'm a little child. You don't need to talk to an adult with a cognitive disability like they're a little child, because they're not. So we talk to little children like little children, because that's what they are. So make sure you don't make these assumptions. It'll save you a lot of embarrassment and it will give a lot of respect to those of us with disabilities. Thanks.